My name is Marco Blanca. I'm from class uh, 10D and I would like to talk about fam the families. Uh, our group, the 10D, is a really compassionate and diligent group of young people and we are really enthusiastic about learning English. And I chose this topic because it is really close to me and living with my family shaped me as a person. Um, my topics include uh, my experience, families in the past and today, types of families, the issues, adoption and found family, the statistics and how family influences you. Um, I would like to talk, I would like to start with the type of families. It can be based on birth, marriage, residence, authorities, nature of the relation and the size and structure of the families. My experience, uh, I'm coming from an extended family. I have three biological siblings and two step siblings from my father's side. And I'm really close to my aunts, my uncles, my uh, grandparents and my cousins from my mother's side. Um, now I would like to talk about the differences between modern and the families of the past. Uh, we are really different from each other compared to now in the parents' work, the presence of the grandparents, the children's free time and attitude towards the older generation. The generation cap, gap itself is sometimes a really big problem in families and the importance of the family and what it symbolizes to us in to today's society. The first type of family I would like to talk about is the nuclear family. It's the most common one. It's also called the traditional or the normal family. And it, it's a group consisting of parents and their children, mostly one or two or even more. Um, was popularized in the 20th century and it's it's dominant. It's mostly nuclear families nowadays, but it starts to become less popular in younger among younger couples. Um, my experience with nuclear families, my cousins mostly live in nuclear families and they are, even though they are not as big as my family, they are still really strong together and they really care about one another. So uh, being, not being in a big family doesn't change anything between them. The next one I, I would like to, like to talk about is the extended family. Um, it extends beyond the nuclear family. So it consists now of parents, the children, the grandparents and the cousins and the uncles and aunts too. And they also call it the stem or joint family. Um, I'm, I also come from an extended family. We are the biggest family in my, among my relatives. And even though uh, we mostly live together perfectly fine, uh, we also have our arguments and misunderstandings. So, but I like it, I like it very much. Patchwork families is a new family model made up from the remnants of a divorced family. At least one person brings a child from previous relationships and successfully making it function is a great, is a really big challenge, but I think it's worth the effort. My experience with patchwork families is, for example, my aunt recently divorced and is now in a relationship with another man. And, and this man is really trying to get along with my cousins and connection with them is really difficult, but they get on well, they try their best, and I'm sure they will become a normal family with time. Now I would like to talk about uh, single parenthood, and it's a family with children that is headed by a single parent who does not want or doesn't have a spouse or a life partner. And for many reasons can someone become a single parent. It includes divorce, breakup, abandonment, domestic violence, rape, the death of the partner, or more positive reasons like adoption or 
just one thing to raise a child on your own without any any negative reasons. And uh, unlike what a lot of people say, being a single parent was always present in our time. A, a lot of uh, mothers became single mothers in the past because their husbands died in the war. There were a lot of diseases and a lot of catastrophes. So it's it was always present. Childless families are couples who either cannot or choose not to have children by choice or circumstances. Maybe their relationship is not ready for having a children or they are not financially stable. We, we don't know and there is no such assumption that there's a normal reason why they don't want to have children. They're just, it is their choice. It's also called the forgotten family. Society doesn't really uh, recognize it as the standard and they really try to push their existence aside. However, these people can live happily together even though they don't have a child in their life. Many take on the responsibility of pet ownership, so they basically raise another life form on their own. It's like it's still a family, so we can judge them for not wanting to have children. And my experience with uh, childless families are one of my uncles. He's living with his girlfriend and they are perfectly fine on their own. They don't plan on having children or, or raising anybody at all. And they feel like it's just not how they plan to, to grow old together. Grandparent families are family, a family with grandchildren and no parents present in the intervening generation. Um, the parents are not present in the child's life. This could be due to the parent's death or addiction or the child's abandonment or, or just simply because the parent is not suitable for, for raising the child. And because of that, a lot of grandparents go back to work to earn money so they can properly raise their grandchildren. Uh, we have a lot of issues among families. There is no such thing as a perfect family. Uh, even the simple arguments are common every day and it, it's not necessarily a problem. However, issues like jealousy and fighting between brothers and sisters, um, parents' argument, divorce or separation can really affect a child's mind and personality. And it can lead to the child not wanting to have a family in the future if we do not take care of uh, these problems. Divorce is the process of terminating a marriage or martial union. And it's the choice between the couple if they want to separate or they just want to, to severe the bond between them. You cannot divorce uh, illegally, so it must be done by legal laws. Um, the causes of divorce can be uh, infidelity, domestic violence, midlife crisis or addiction and other factors, but uh, cheating is the most common one. Um, the marriage statistics throughout the years, as you can see in the 1940s, a lot of people started to get married after the war, but these rates slowly dropped and now a lot of people don't choose to get married. And I can only assume it's because a lot of young, young adults are now just gaining some more experience before they jump into a relationship they have to commit to. And I think commitment can be one of the biggest factors uh, a couple can be scared to because it's a lot of responsibility and a lot of work and they might not be ready for it. However, divorce statistics <laughs> rose throughout the years, especially in the United States. After the 1960s, a lot of people separated from each other. And as I said before, a lot of young adults cho choose for a reason that they don't get married too early, because if there are misunderstandings among their marriage, then there, there are more divorces. 
Now I would like to talk about adoption. It's a process whereby a person assumes a parenting of another, usually a child from the person's biological or legal parent or parents. It's popular among same-sex couple and it's and mostly same-sex couple do this kind of activity and it beca it became more legalized, more accepted in today's society. Found families are a group of related people from their own family based on shared experience and understanding of each other rather than the blood ties that would dictate a biological family. So it's, it's mostly, it can be a group of friends or a group of unrelated people who just live together and take up the roles of family, of a family member and take care of each other. And it's a really popular trope common fiction. And in today's society, a lot of young adults just to choose to live together as roommates and they treat each other as siblings. And I would like to say this quote by Henrik der Glacier, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, which basically means that family doesn't stop at the broad blood relatives. You can see here that um, families throughout the years, um, especially in America and Europe, a lot of uh, dependent children and their parents don't live together. They live together even after the child past the age of 18. So especially in nuclear families or extended families, the, the whole group sticks together. And uh, a couple, for example, living with non-dependent children became less common. And it just shows that young adults nowadays tend to take more responsibility and they don't want to get separated from their ties. Extended family households are most common globally. It show, this uh, picture shows that mostly Asian and African uh, um, cultures highly regard the extended families. They mostly live in a family of, of 10 and with their uncles, with their grandparents and children. They live under the same uh, household. Unlike Europe and North America, or just America in general, they live in nuclear or smaller families. Household size varies sharply by region. Around the world, the average person lives in a household of 4.9 people. However, this number, as I said before, is much bigger in Africa or Asia, uh, while in Europe and America, it's, it, it, it gets smaller. How family influences your development as a person. A family teaches their children values, skills in so socialization, security, and it shapes them as a whole. If a child is in a, grows up in a, in a kind and understanding household, then the child's, the child's uh, mental, physical, and uh, emotional growth changes just like this. Um, positive relationships with the parents and siblings help the child uh, progress, while negative uh, experiences can also affect the child, but they need to seek help if such thing happens. And I would like to finish my presentation with a quote from Brett Henry. Families are the compass that guide us. They are the inspiration to reach great heights and our comfort when we occasionally falter. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.